There are literally so many songs written about eye color. Brown eyed girl, hey blue eyes, behind these hazel eyes, green eyed lady, eyes of silver, black eyed peas. LOL JK, that's barely a band. People have been obsessed with eye color for centuries, and you probably have some feelings about your own unique optical hue, even if you're not completely sure how you ended up with that color anyway. So keep those peepers peeled, cause you're about to learn what determines eye color. How about we just blow your mind one time right up top? Even though there are endless combinations of eye colors ranging from deep delicious browns to bright baby blues, there are actually only two different pigments available inside our eyeballs, brown and red. That's it, it's how these colors are arranged and how they interact with light and other pieces of anatomy that creates the color we perceive. Let's bag it up, bag it up, bag it up, and twerk into a little anatomy. You got your pupil, which is the black hole at the center of the eyeball, and then you got your iris, which is the ring around the pupil with all the colored bits in it. The iris is actually a super thin muscle surrounded by connective tissue that allows it to expand and contract depending on the light situation you're in. Among the connective tissues are cells that create pigment called melanocytes. If you're a loyal, pretty smart watcher, you probably remember melanocytes from our sunburn episodes, which makes you pretty awesome. They are the same cells in our skin and hair that manufacture the two types of melanin we see as colors, which are eumelanin, the brown creator, and pheomelanin, the red creator. If you're rocking dark brown eyes, that means you have the most amount of pigment in your iris. And if you have baby blues, you have the least amount of pigment. But remember, there is no such thing as blue pigment. Blue is a result of the lack of pigment, plus the whitish collagen fibers that scatter light within the iris. For hazel, green, and gray eyes, it's the same shtick just with different levels of pigment and light and tissue at play. It's basically an elaborate optical illusion, except it's a double optical illusion because it requires two eyes to be enjoyed. <sighs> Maybe the coolest thing about eye color is that no matter how similar they look to your mom or dad or siblings, no one else has the same exact pigment makeup that you do. It's basically the fingerprints of the eyeballs. But speaking of your fam, what up fam? A big part of the iris pigment combo you end up with is largely determined by genetics. We know, genes again? It's true, those pesky little DNA double helixes come up so often in pretty smart episodes, but it's only because they're the building blocks of our entire existence. I guess it really is true what they say. When all else fails, just blame your genes. It's almost always their fault. For a long time, scientists thought that a single gene was responsible for eye color, and that you got it from your mama, or your daddy, or both. But then they kept seeing parents with brown eyes popping out blue-eyed babies, and they were like, and I oop. Maybe we should reconsider this. That's when they realize that it's actually a whole bunch of genes that work together, and they're probably the genes that relate to the production of melanin. Amazingly, there is still research happening today to hone in on exactly which genes are doing what, but at least we know now that eye color is not at all easy to predict. It's also hard to see what your eyes will end up looking like, because when you come flying out of your mother's womb at birth, you don't have any melanin in your eyes so all newborn eyes look blue or even colorless. Once you turn three, you'll have all your melanocytes in place to give you the color you'll have for the rest of your life. Well, that is until you start aging during your golden years, or you contract an eye disease, or you experience physical trauma to the iris. But other than that, you're set. There are also some genetic disorders that give eyes a pink or red color, such as ocular albinism. But this doesn't have to do with the red pigment from melanocytes, which is a little confusing. It's actually because there's such a small amount of melanin in the iris that the blood vessels in the eyeball become visible. Those blood vessels are also what give regular eyed people demon eyes when someone takes a picture with the flash on. It's the flash reflecting off the back of the eye, which is where the blood vessels live. There are also some people with two different colored eyes, which is another condition called heterochromia. And contrary to your super superstitious old world grandparent, these multicolored eye havers are not witches, just people with some genetic wonkiness. Of course, whatever eye color you have, we are 1000% sure you look fierce with it. But eye color has another purpose other than just making you look gorgeous. Just like it does with skin, melanin protects your body parts from the sun's harmful rays. And if pale people are more vulnerable to UV damage, that means that light colored eyes are also in more danger. But even though brown eyes are the most common eye color in the world, everybody should be wearing sunglasses and hats to protect their precious peepers whenever they can. Once you're out of harm's way, however, let those optical babies free for all to see. Who knows? Maybe someone might write a song about them one day. In your eyes, the light, the heat, your eyes, I am complete. Yeah, I know that's already a song, but there are no bad ideas in a brainstorm. Gosh, 